All right, guys, 10-2. 10 10-2, 10 okay? 10-2, comparing two means. 10-2. Comparing two needs. Okay, today is opening day. Opening day for the Red Sox. We're hoping for a better year. Got to be a better year than last year. Got to be. Okay? This video is dedicated. This video is dedicated to this guy right here. Mr. Nathan Evald. People say, oh, Nathan Evald. He's not even a good starter. Okay? He won the World Series for the Red Sox. Three years ago. Three years ago. For those seniors, you were here. You were here at this school, this haunted hallways. Okay? We were doing the haunted hallways, and then after that, we went home to watch the Red Sox. Okay? They're playing the Dodgers in the World Series. And it was extra innings. And this guy evolved, Nathan evolved. He pitched a couple days before that. And they said it was an extra inning game in the World Series. They needed to have somebody go out there. He said, Coach, I can go. Give me the ball. Goes out there, pitches an inning. They said, All right, that's probably enough. No, I'm good. Six innings, 100 pitches, okay? When I think of him in that game, you can see little, little hairs on my arms sticking, okay? Here is what, here is what one of his teammates said about that performance. Uh, 
the standard deviation for that is 30. Okay, and then for Riderwood, Riderwood is 175, and the standard deviation for that is 25. All right, so center, they want Camberley minus Riderwood. That's going to be 180 minus 175, so that's going to be 5, and that's in grams. Okay, shape. Okay, they tell us that it was approximately uh, normal. Okay, it says approximately normally distributed, so it states normal. It states approximately normal, and then we get to spread. Okay, and we get to take the square root of 30 squared and then 25 squared. Let's look at the sample for the Camberley. Camberley, um, 20, it's 20 potatoes from each sample. Okay, so we're gonna put these over 20. I'm gonna see what that says in the book for an answer. 8.7. Grams. Okay? Describe the shape, center, and spread. Okay, we did that. Center, five grams. Okay, shape, approximately normal. Spread, standard deviation, 8.73 grams. Okay? We're not going to worry about the second part of that. We're going to do some of that when we do our significance test in our confidence interval. We are going to start with a confidence interval. A little confidence interval. So on the next page, to the bottom, confidence intervals for the difference of two means. Okay? Two sample t interval for a difference between two means. Two sample. Two sample t interval. Notice it's not z because it's not proportions. Two sample t interval for difference between two means. Okay? So here's, here's how we set it up. You subtract the two means. Plus or minus, critical T, sample standard deviation divided by N squared. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Plastic grocery bags. Plastic grocery bags. Okay, these are outlawed places. So I take my luncheon every day. They're outlawed. If you can't go to Amherst, you have them. They'll arrest you. Okay, so those of you guys going to eat masks, don't take any plastic trash to the trash bags over there. They're serious about that stuff. Okay, they don't care if you catch COVID by bringing your own bags in, but they're going to get you with the plastic. Construct and interpret a 99% confidence interval for the difference in mean capacity. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, we want to construct. One, two, construct. A, 99% confidence interval for the mean capacity or mean difference in grocery bags. Okay, there's our state. Okay, let's get right to our plan. Let's do the plan. Now again, I would love, I would love to think that you guys are doing this. You're pausing the video and doing it yourself, seeing if you can get it. I'd love to see that. That's how you, that's telling me that you really know it. Okay? What is this? Two sample T interval for the difference of two means. Okay, we just said it. Two sample T interval for the difference of two means. And now let's do our random, let's do our normal, let's do our independent. Random, let me see. Random sample, random sample, there we go. Okay, so we have, it states, the samples are random. And, uh-oh, we've only got five. Five in each sample. That's not good. That means that's extra work for us. But we can do it. Okay, we can do it. So we go to our little calculator. Okay. And 
I am going to hit stat. I'm going to hit edit. Hope you guys can see that up there. Okay. Stat edit. I've got to go to my lists and I've got to clear them. Um, clear that. All right. So in L1, I've got 12, 5, 7, 2, 13, 9, 9, 9, 11, 2, 15, 15, 4, 4, 7, and 10, 9, 8, oops, 10, 8, 9, 6. And then I do the same thing for L2, 9, 5, 5, 2, 10, 8, 9, 6, 6, 9, 8, 3, 8, 7, 6, 7, and 9, 9, 7, 2. Okay? So I have my values entered in there. Now I'm going to set up a graph. I'm going to turn on my stat plots. Okay? Turn this one on, and I want a scatter plot that shows, um, not scatter plot, I'm sorry, a box plot that shows outliers. And then watch this. I'm going to go over here to plot 2. And I'm going to turn that one on, and I'm going to say show the same graph, okay? And then I'm going to hit graph. It's not going to show up. And I'm going to hit. Uh, oh, I've got something in my y equals. Well, I got to clear that out from calculus. Um, so let's go to graph, and then let's hit zoom, and let's hit fit, and I get my two little graphs. And guess what? They look like the same graph because they are, because they are. When I do my stat plot for my second one, I need to make sure that this is on L2. So a good lesson to learn. Now when I hit graph, and then I hit um, zoom fit, I get this for a graph. Okay? So we want to look at what this graph shows. Okay? So I would draw, I would draw, okay, a little number line here. A little number line. Now I have no idea what those numbers are. Okay, so I've got to find out what they are. So I hit my trace button. Okay, I hit my trace button, and I'm going to go down to this one. Six nine eight three seven eight seven five nine five five two ten thousand four hundred thirty four. So I guess over here we make this like I don't know. Make it like 7,000. Okay, and then what are we going to go up? I could be 1,000. So make it 7,000, make it 8,000, make it 9,000, 10,000, 11,000. How far do we have to go? 15, well, 12,000, 13, 14, and 15, okay? And then you've got to draw an approximation of what your graph is. Okay, so this one will go a little bit outside that, right? And you make your two box plots. Okay, now I'm not going to spend time doing that, but you can certainly do that on your own. All it is is copying. Okay, and then underneath it, you would say the graphs don't show severe skew or Outliers, so we can use the normal approximation. All right. Now we do independent, 10% condition. Five bags at target, and five bags at bashes is less than or equal to 10% of all bags at the stores. All right? All right? We got that, right? So that's a really good job on our state and our plan. And now we've got to do our do part. We've got to do the do, OK? So let me erase this. Let me erase it. So, the do step. Well, I've got to find out what those, um, what are we doing here? Are we doing target minus bashes? 
Let me just see if I did that when I did it. Target minus dashes. Yep. So target minus dashes. Oops. Okay. Plus or minus that critical T times the sample standard deviation for one squared divided by N1 and then the second one squared N2. So we've got to find out what these, that's not a half, what am I doing? It's a bar. I think I said bar, but I put a half. Um, I've got to find out what these means are. So let's go to our graph. Let's go to our graphing calculator, excuse me. Let's go um, stack calc two variable statistics. And I need to do this for L1 and L2. So my first one is going to be 12825.8. So that's target. So my X bar for target is 12825.8. And the standard deviation for target is 1912.48. 1912.48. Now, if I scroll down, I can find the others. There you go back. Y bar would be 9234. So that's going to be Bashus. 9234. And then the standard deviation for Bashus is 1474.20, 14 14 okay, so I want target minus bashes, so that's going to be 12.825 minus 9.234, plus or minus, we've got to get a critical T, what do we want? We wanted a 99% confidence interval, I don't think this calculator has that. Or inverse T. See, it doesn't have it. But I have another one that does. Second distor, inverse T. Okay, the area. Well, we're taking a 99% confidence interval. So that means that we have 1% in the two tails. So if I take that and divide that by 2, it's going to be 0 0.005. So I enter that in. 0 0.005 degrees of freedom. There's only five bags. Okay, now when you have two samples, okay, you have to go with the smaller of the two when you're using your critical T. In this case, they're both the same. So we would just type in four for degrees of freedom. Five minus one, four. So I get a critical T of 4.60, it seems really, 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 that's what they got to, 4.604, 4.604, and then we're on the right track here, times, let's do this stuff, so this is going to be 1912.48 squared divided by 5 plus 1474.2 squared divided by 5. Let's see what we get for interval. Doing that out, we're going to get an interval negative 1380 to 8564. Okay. So, conclude. Ready? Just listen, okay? Just listen. I'll read it slowly. We are 99% confident that the true mean difference between the bags, grocery bags, the capacity of the grocery bags at Target and the grocery bags at Bashes is captured in the interval from 1, 000, negative 1,380 
to 8,564.